How are you? Tanja here, peak performance specialist for real estate and property professionals who really want to grow themselves, their people and their business in the least amount of time. Ah, Diane, welcome. Kate Ashton, welcome. This is the last Monday um, Mindset Mastery Monday. Hey, Kelly, for 2019. Good morning to you on Instagram. Good morning to you on Facebook. I hope you had a beautiful weekend. Share with me one word to describe how you feel right now. I feel expanded. I've had an amazing weekend. Absolutely amazing weekend. Good morning, Julianne. How are you? Amy Gray in the house. Good morning. So <clears throat> Lou, welcome back. Lovely to have you here too. Please type in if you're not driving one word to describe how you are right now in this moment. Fiona Knight, great to have your company as always. Laura Leans, good morning. Great to have you here. What's one word? Just type it in here on Instagram, here on Facebook to describe how you feel right now. As I said, I feel incredibly expanded. I've had an amazing weekend. I feel full of love, health and vitality, ready to complete 29 in the next couple of days to get set for our best year yet. Patty, hey Patty, how are you? Amy's good morning. Uh, good morning. Uh, Amy's also very grateful. Julianne, good morning. Tanji, good morning to you, my love. Okay, let's get stuck straight into it. So for those of you who tuned in to Rapid Fire Friday last week, which is uh, the live coaching session that I do where I reflect on the one-on-one -on -one coaching themes for the week, I shared that this week, today, I'm going to be uh, relaxed. Good on you, Lou. It's good to be relaxed. I feel pretty chillaxed. Uh, it's the, I'm going to share with you today and walk you through a process to powerfully complete the year and really get to and manifest everything that you desire for the next decade that kicks off obviously 2020 <clears throat> in a couple of days. Good morning, beautiful to yourself. Hey, Erin, great to have you here as always. So uh, if you like to, you can uh, go onto my Facebook page on my business page, which is just The Tangerly. And in, in the last thread, they're actually, no, I'll drop it in here. I'll drop it in here. That's just too easy <clears throat> in the comments. In the comments, there is a template for a Google Drive folder, which has got the completion exercise uh, template in it. You don't have to download it now, but download it after this session. And I really invite you to pour yourself a cup of something that you love. Don't really attempt to try and do this in one sitting because it can take uh, an hour or a couple of hours. G'day PK, great to see you here. And uh, if you're on Instagram, <clears throat> uh, after you watch this video, the interview this video, there is my bio link, the second button, if you press the link in my bio, the second button is where you can get the link to download the template as well. Now, consider that most of us, well, first of all, what I want to say is consider that the key to happiness is progress. When we are progressing, when we are moving forward, when we are paying off debt, when we are losing weight, when we are growing our business, when we are enriching our relationships, when we are having new experiences, it gives us access to happiness. Would you agree? Does that make sense? It's statistically proven. If you have nothing to look forward to, that is one of the best ways to actually fall into a pit of depression because there's nothing in your future. There's no light. There's no joy. There's no game. And consider what makes you who you are in this moment is the future that you're living into. So if the future that you're living into is a hot mess, is a messy house, is a dirty car, is taxes that haven't been done, is finances that are all over the place, is incomplete information and communication and relationships, is just mess, then that's going to create a stressful experience for you. So <clears throat> One of the best ways to set yourself up for success is to complete all the incompleteness, is to have integrity with all the things that you said you were going to do, the whole shoulda, coulda, woulda, gonna, done is. Does that make sense? Complete the past and then really start to lay the foundations to create a beautiful new future. But before we create a new future, we actually must complete. So I have this amazing template that I've done with clients, one-on-one -on -one coaching clients for years. This template, not just the template itself, but the work that you do to complete this template and what happens as a result, for me, is actually alchemical, meaning transformation occurs. 
there is something unbelievably powerful. Hey, Kelly, uh, <coughs> Diane's giving me a thumbs up. It makes sense to Diane. Awesome. Oh, I'm sorry. I thought I shut down my emails. So first of all, consider that uh, before you have, before you create, you must complete. <coughs> so what does completion look like? It's tying up loose ends. It's saying what needs to be said, uh, you know, and uh, completing any in unfinished business with people. It's, as I said, paying bills, paying taxes, or at least going on a payment plan. So the future that you're living into is one of responsibility, is one of empowerment rather than overwhelm. Psychologically, <clears throat> we all know that the new year is where people go, oh, I'm going to start creating new habits and new ways of being and set some new, who we got here, Duke, g'day Duke, g'day, how are you? Some new ways of being, some new habits and new resolutions. About 50% of people that make a new year's resolution quit or haven't even taken any action by the first couple of weeks in February. So the intentions are there, but because it's not habitual, because we're not disciplined and because we don't have a powerful why that's in fueling the actions that we need to take, consist, consistent actions and disciplinary actions that we need to take every day, we don't necessarily see it through. Does that make sense? Have you ever had a New Year's resolution and not fulfilled on it? And there, how do you feel when you haven't achieved those goals? So for the clients of mine that are already online, I just want to wave my pom-poms for you and say, bloody awesome. So many of you have achieved unbelievable breakthroughs this year and you make it a pleasure to be your coach. And for those that are on here and aren't my clients, great, good on you for being on here. This is free peak performance coaching for you to get access to really live a life that you incredibly love. So <clears throat> as I said, for those just joining, Emily, good morning, my love. Great to have your company as always. On the Facebook page, there's a link to uh, download your completion exercise. If you're on Instagram in my link, uh, link tree bio in my, you know, the link in the bio, click that, the second button, you can download it. So let's begin. If you've got a pen and paper handy, uh, if you don't, I invite you to go grab one if, if it's close by. Morning from the Gold Coast. Good morning, Emily from the Gold Coast. How is it? What's the weather like up there? Is it beautiful and sunny? <clears throat> okay, so the first step to completing 2019 and getting you set for your greatest year yet, I want you to, if you've got pen and paper, to write down these four questions. And I'm going to be available to do any live coaching that or any question that you want answered. If I can answer it to the best of my ability, I'm here for you because I want to fuel inject your ability to create the best year yet. The question number one to power complete year. By the way, you can use this template to complete a major project, to complete a relationship, to complete any phase of your life, to complete a job. It's great for leaders and teams to use to complete a, a project that they've worked on collectively. Question number one. Are you ready? What have I created this year so, or the last 12 months? So what have I created in the last 12 months? And I also invite you to write down these categories. These are the eight spokes of the wheel of life. You can create your own categories, but if you cover these, you've pretty much got everything covered. Category number one, health. I really think that's worth first because, you know, you want to really have optimal health. Health, wealth, family and friends, hobbies, passions and interests, Hey, great, great to have you here. Uh, romantic relationship, like a significant other. Personal development. Business, work or your job. And then contribution or spirituality. So I'm going to say these eight categories again. These are the eight categories that you can ask these four questions in. And this is all in the template that you can download in the Facebook thread and uh, on the, the second button on my bio link for Instagram. Number one, health. What have you created for your health in the last 12 months? What have you done for yourself? Wealth. What have you achieved financially? What debt have you paid off? Have you increased your income? Have you increased your average unit sale if you're in real estate? 
Have you taken care of, you know, personal commitments? Have you chunked down some tax? Have you chunked down your mortgage? Have you saved for a holiday or an investment property? Like what have you achieved? Your uh, family and friends, what deepened, what relationships have you deepened? What new friendships have you formed? What things have you created in your relationships with others? Hobbies, passions and interests. What things have you cons consistently done this year? What new experience have you had? Where did you travel to? What new courses did you do? Uh, the next one is a significant relationship. If you are in, in a relationship and a partnership or a marriage, <clears throat> you know, what did you create in your marriage or your relationship this year? How did you deepen that experience? Uh, then the next phase is personal development. How did you grow this year? Did you get a coach? Did you uh, did you do some personal transformation? Did you do some work on yourself, read some books, do some courses, listen to some podcasts? What did you create for your own personal transformation? In your business, your job and your career, it's Chelsea, scratching in the floor, shh, darling. What have you created in your job, in your business, in your work? What projects did you finish? How did you grow your business? How did you expand your database? How many houses did you sell? How much of the rent roll did you grow? Or what did you, know, did you get yourself a promotion? Or did you change jobs? And then finally, spirituality and contribution. Did you contribute to others? Did you expand spiritually? Do you feel fulfilled as a soul? They're all the categories in those categories as you'll see in the template, of what you want to really powerfully look at what you completed this year. So that's the first question. What did you create? What did you create in those areas of your life? Does that make sense? Just give me a thumbs up on Facebook or a thumbs up on Instagram if that makes sense. Now, once you acknowledge all that you created, that's a really powerful um, element in itself because typically we're really hard on ourselves. How have we got here? Grain. I don't know how to say that. Thanks, Emily. Gra uh, grain emiculti tree. Mm, I'm sorry, I'm not saying that right, but I love that you're here. Thank you. Uh, so all the <laughs> hey Kelly, thank you. So uh, and Martine, great to have you here. Beautiful. Thanks, Diane. Great. Uh, and I want you to hear for yourself. Just type in. Out of all of those categories, health, wealth, family, and friends, uh, hobbies, passions, and interests personal deepened relationships, uh, you know, um, personal development, business, work and spirituality and contribution, which category do you really feel that you had a lot of creative uh, en you know, energy in this year and that you achieved a lot? Which category? Lovely to, lovely to be here. Oh, you're welcome. Please tell me what your name is because I don't think I said it right. Haha. <laughs> it's an uh, Irish name and it said Grania. G'day Grania. Thank you for explaining your name. I'm glad I can pronounce it right. So which category did you create the most magic in for 2019? And it's really important because often we're really hard on ourselves and we crack the whip around what we haven't done. It is super powerful for your subconscious mind to receive the message that you are a creator, that you said you would lose eight kilos or 10 kilos and you did, that you said you would be a non-smoker and you are, that you said you would grow your business by 20%, that you said you would go to Paris and you did, that you said you would you know, become vegetarian and you have, you said you would deepen that relationship and you did. When you stop and acknowledge all the things that you created, you are sending a very, very powerful message to your subconscious that you are in alignment with your word. And I don't know any more powerful modality to personal empowerment than being congruent with your word because our thoughts and words create our reality. And we're either creating an empowered or a disempowered reality. Hell yes, says Patty. Awesome. I don't smoke anymore. Emily, boom shakalaka. Well done to you. Go me should never have started. Well, let's just focus on the choice that you've made right now. Personal development business is good for you. Write to me on, on Facebook. Which area did you create the most magic in for 2019 and the, which is the area you're most proud of? So that's step one. Once you've really taken the time to write down everything that you created in those areas, then we get to question number two, which is what are you over? And I love to spell this capital O V A over like I'm freaking over it. This is where you have full permission to purge all the things that you're over that you do 
that others do, that specific others do, that happens at work, that happens at the gym, that happens in life, politics, government. This is a no judgment zone. This is where you are free to go, I am freaking over procrastinating. I'm over telling myself tomorrow I'm gonna. I'm over pressing snooze. I'm over not exercising. I'm over feeling scarcity. I'm over being hard on myself. I'm over that relationship. I'm over my job, I'm over my neighbor, I'm over my car, I'm over my house, I'm over whatever. Okay, that's what you wanna do. This is really, really powerful. Uh, Patty's writing, personal development, good on you, Patty, well done. Uh, yeah, invest in yourself, that's one of the best investments you can make. Uh, Diane's, self-love, time and space for my spiritual health, beautiful, yeah, me too, I've had a, just a divine deep dive into that this weekend. Um, Self-growth and confidence, good for you. I love this question, Diane. I love this question too. And the third question is, is even more powerful. What are you over? And I want to know, what are you over? Type it here on Facebook and type it in on Instagram. What are you over? Seriously, no judgment. What have you had enough of? Tina Harvey, good morning. We are unpacking the completion exercise, my love. I write two page, uh, I'll write two pages worth. Good. Get it out. I don't care if it's 20 pages worth. Get it out. There is something quite cathartic about getting out of your head and off your chest and out of your body and onto paper to say, I'm over it. You're declaring you're over it. You've had enough. Otherwise, it's a gutful. You know that saying, I've had a gutful? Your gut, your gut is your where your personal power sits. From a chakra perspective, which is the Sanskrit word for energy, energy will, your gut is where your personal power, your confidence, and it's your intray of life. If you've, had a, if you've had a gut full of stuff, you want to get that out. You want to purge that out so you can create space to manifest what you really desire in 20. Uh, 20. Kate, great to have you here, my love. Thanks to jo for joining. Tash is in the house. Uh, who have we got here? Jafari in the house. What an awesome name, Jafari. <clears throat> okay. So what are you over? And I'd love to hear. Type it in. What are you over? Guys that have just joined, we're unpacking the distinction of how to complete 2019 to really set you up for an awesome 2020. Diane saying, uh, I find uh, letting go so hard. This exercise was so cathartic. Thank you. You're so, oh, you've done it already, Diane. Have you actually done the exercise? And you've written two pages here. Ooh, did you use the template, by the way? If you have, let me know. Uh, Michael, great to have, oh, Michelle, great to have you here, my love. Thanks for tuning in. Procrastinating, being, uh, being stuck and negative. Yes, Patty's over procrastinating, feeling stuck and negative. What are you over? What, what are you over from politics? What are you over from the news? What are you over from yourself? What are you over? I'm over doubting myself and not putting myself first. Amen. Uh, Maria, worthy woman, great to have you here. Diane's, yes, yes, I did. Ah, Diane, do me and the team that are online a favor. Please write in, what was it like to do that completion exercise, my love? What did you get out of it? This question is powerful. What are you over? Let it rip, purge it out, no judgment, don't feel bad. Uh, you know, this is where you actually just really give yourself the space and grace to get it off your chest and so your gut is no longer full. Uh, you know, I think we are a really polite society and uh, I'm also mindful that you don't want to purge your stuff on others. That's irresponsible. But I know from being a peak performance coach that stuff has happened in your life or you've been affected or impacted in ways and you haven't spoken up and you haven't said anything and you haven't completed it. I want you to get that that energy is still existing in you and until you make space, you won't achieve a sense of grace to be able to then go and create things that are new. You'll be operating on top of all of this and that's like icing over a poo pie. I want you to get all of that out, have a disassociated relationship with it, separate yourself from it and go, whew, and then get ready for the third question. So the first two questions are, what have I created in 2019 with my health, my wealth, my family and friends, my hobbies, passions and interests, my significant other, my personal development, my business, my work, my job and my spirituality or contribution. Number two, what am I over in all of those areas? Purge, get it out, no judgment, that's your zone to just unleash. Question three, once you've asked yourself and unpacked what you're over, this is where the alchemy really begins. Then you ask yourself, what, those things that I'm over, 
What have they taught me? What are the lessons? Because my friends, if you don't stop to reflect on the lessons and blessings from the things that you are over, you will continue to manifest those experiences in 2020 until you learn the lessons. I'm saying let's create a shortcut, shall we? Let's not unconsciously keep manifesting situations to learn the lesson, to learn the lesson, to get back away relationship with it let's have a disassociated relationship with this information let's look at it on paper and go cool I'm over that what is this teaching me so Patty's written down she's over procrastinating being stuck and being negative so Patty I would ask you if you'd be willing to share here on Facebook when you look at that you're over it you're over procrastinating and feeling stuck and uh, negativity What's the lesson here? What is this teaching you when you stop to take a look? Same for you on Instagram. What is it teaching you? <clears throat> oh, there's been more messages I haven't responded to. Uh, hi, fine, fine pet pics. Fine pet pics. Great to have you here. Girly squad over here. Awesome. Uh, Michelle, I'm, oh, I didn't finish it. Uh, fine pics. Emily, great to have you here. Michelle's, I'm over letting people's judgments control what I do in life. Oh, yeah, Michelle, and you've quite what I people think of you is absolutely none of your business. Inspiring mums joined. G'day, inspiring mums. We are unpacking uh, a completion exercise. What are you over? Share. What are you actually over in 2019? I'm over people pleasing. Ooh, girl. We talked about this in a previous Mindset Mastery Monday. Let me offer you something if that's okay. People pleasing for all of us that are uh, addicted to people pleasing. I want you to get consider that the a you're a nice person and that's lovely, but not if you're people pleasing at the mercy of your own personal satisfaction, fulfillment, and truth. And that's when ple people pleasing really is ineffective. When you're people pleasing, it is because you are seeking validation. What you desire is love and connection with others. And typically, we are afraid to honor our truth. Uh, in those situations and we want to please others because we make it more important to seek validation and get love and acknowledgement and connection from others than own our truth. And I had a lesson in this on the weekend. <clears throat> I had a really expansive experience on Saturday. I had a commitment with a really beautiful girlfriend on the Sunday and I was feeling into what do I truly, truly need for myself and I needed a day of silence on Sunday. I needed a rest day. And I text her, <clears throat> on the Saturday night and communicated that. And I was nervous communicating that because I like to be my word with others. And, uh, you know, and I did, and, you know, it triggered something in her and she, you know, said that she didn't feel valued and I heard her and we just beautifully navigated our feelings that arose. And, you know, we really discussed that when you honor your truth, sometimes that is going to impact others. It is going to have an impact on people. I truly believe though that everything can be created created and resolved and healed inside of communication and and having given it a better thought rather than text it because it was late at night I should have at least left a voice message and communicated myself a bit clearer because things get misconstrued in a text and you don't have access to tonality and inflection and you know the timber of a voice which uh, you know erodes <clears throat> that ability to connect so uh you know, so yeah, you, when, when you honor your truth, sometimes you may disappoint people, but can, it can really be done in a very respectful way. But if you are addicted to people pleasing, my, my love letter to you from my heart to you is I invite you to get comfortable being uncomfortable putting yourself first. I invite you to begin to get selfish, not self-absorbed, selfish, full of self. When you honor your truth first and get okay with saying no thank you and not be fueled by the desire to please others. It gives you access to massive personal empowerment, which reduces the amount of disappointment and resentment because people can feel when you make a commitment just to appease them or make them happy. Does that make sense? So yes, Michelle saying yes, makes, um, make space. Love it. So that's my little thought on people pleasing. I'm over not having a great relationship with my husband. Uh, stop step, stepping over it. Emily, sister, woo girl, let me tell you. 
I, I, my husband and I completed our relationship. We completed 20 years of marriage. We've been over it for a number of years, but we were keeping it together for the family and we were trying really hard because we did love each other. We just were no longer in love and we were no longer growing together. And it's been the hardest, the heartbreak, most heartbreaking thing that I've ever had to endure, but it's also been liberating and everything in between. So it's, why are we pretending through life? Like this life is a gift. We are born and we're just the next moment it's a blink so what are you waiting for just get in communication just be courageous and say I'm not happy not you don't make me happy I'm not happy and I need to get clear about that completing where you're at in your dysfunctional relationship makes the space for something new to arise, whether that's re in, rekindle the relationship or end it and make the space for another one to arise. Patty has said, action comes from me. Stop thinking, start doing. What am I walking past? Uh, what I'm walking past, I'm accepting. Well said, Patty. So that is that is a, a, a solution. My question is, Patty, if you're willing to go there, is you're over procrastinating and being stuck in negativity what is the lesson? So you're saying the lesson is action Action comes from me uh, and uh, stop. I need to stop thinking and start doing. What is this teaching you though? What are you learning about yourself when you continue to procrastinate and you, you stay stuck? What is this teaching you? What's the wisdom here for you? Because if we go straight to action, it will be repeating itself. Good morning, Samantha. Great to have you here. Uh, nasty bit of people, especially on social media, don't buy in or take it on board. Yes, you don't have to receive the gifts of others. You can say thank you. Healthy boundaries is a great thing. You know, I have really clear boundaries. I have clear energetic boundaries uh, and I think people actually really respect it. Emily's over. Not yet. We've spoken about that one, Emily. So my invitation to you, sister, do the exercise, get it off your chest, unleash yourself and then see what is there to communicate to your husband because energy is palpable. And if he's, if you're not happy, it's likely he's not happy either, my love. So just be brave. At least if nothing, enter 2020 speaking your truth. Speak your truth even if your voice shakes. You know, like there's something unbelievably powerful about that. Diane is saying, uh, so sleep finding it hard to see so so deep by the end uh, so so deep by the end over this exercise it took me three to four hours in between cleaning doing both has changed my uh me on a cellular level a freaking men to that sister yes it is spiritual housekeeping like you know i got a very clear message over the weekend to cleanse the house to clear everything and to anything that belongs to my my previous husband and i and when i need to separate it now i need to make space and and same for him we need to you know release each other so it is a powerful exercise to complete over being uh, scared of being seen ah oh, tina harvey and you are so divine we want to see you it's a big fear for a lot of people. We are afraid to be seen. Do you know why we're afraid to be seen? We are afraid of being judged. Why are we afraid of being judged? Because we are afraid to be disconnected and experience being alone. We are, what I'm doing now is pretty vulnerable, right? I'm live on Facebook and Instagram. I am unscripted. I'm just flying by the seat of my pants, right? And I could stuff up. I could be judged fully shit can go down and i don't care because i'm here to be of service to you i'm not here to be polished i'm not here to be perfect i'm not here to be liked you know do i have an ego yes do i judge myself yes do i notice it and replace it with something more empowering yes that's the practice when we open ourselves up to be seen by ourselves first, then we can radiate our magic and love and soul to others. And there's something incredibly powerful about that. So Tina, thank you for sharing that because most people are afraid to be seen. We really are. And we're afraid to be seen because we do not want to be judged and we don't want to be judged because we don't want to feel separation and isolation. What we crave more than anything is connection. And here's what I'm learning more and more for myself. I'm over not loving myself. 
I am entering this state of incredible self-love. And that does mean be selfish, not self-absorbed. There's a big difference. But selfish is about honouring your truth, honouring your self-expression and communicating in a way that's really mindful and respectful to others. There is nothing more powerful. And your version of being seen doesn't mean you're going to be on national or international television or have your own YouTube. It just could be even looking at yourself in the mirror and say, I love you, I accept you, I forgive you, I honour you, you're doing your best bloody job. Keep showing up or some version of that. Does that make sense? So, sister, my invitation is you, it for you is what, let me ask you, what is the impact of you not allowing yourself to be seen by yourself first and then by others? How does this keep you stuck? How does this block you? How does this suppress your energy? How does this suppress your creativity? How does this impact you being self-expressed in the world? If you'd be willing to share, go for it. Uh, I will use your questionnaire uh, tool forever. Diane, please do so. It is something that I invite you to do to complete the end of every year. I'll be emailing it to all of my one-on-one -on -one clients to, so they can do it and can really begin to start creating their best life next. Uh, Emily Morgan is saying, uh, what are you saying? Aloha. Amazing. Awesome. Haley, great to have you here, my love. We're talking about how to powerfully complete 2019. Uh, Brendan, <clears throat> great to see you talk about a guy that's created a ripper year for himself, inspiring mums uh, and fine. What have we got? I'm sorry I'm moving around like this. It's just that the sun is glaring on the screen. Brooklyn's here. Uh, Brendan saying, being there, been there before, yes. Uh, yes, this has been a big lesson and success uh, this year. Awesome. Uh, I pretended in my marriage and left oh girl yes pretense is a killer it's inauthentic when you're pretending you're happy when you're pretending you're fulfilled when like pretense is fully disempowering it's incongruent hey sarah great to have you here uh i set 20 minutes on social media which is helping reduce my overwhelm nice one yeah i noticed i got my alert to say I think I did an average of eight hours of social media for the week. <clears throat> I use it for work, so but I'm mindful of just the, the mind-numbing scrolling. Okay, uh, who else? Emily saying, so true. Love that I did that too. It was refreshing to clear through everything. Yes, great. Clear, clear, clear. Bills, concentrate garage to start a brand new year cleaning the clutter restricts personal and professional life stops me doing the things I want to do yeah thanks Tina well said so uh, that's that's the that's the bent that's the cost hun when you don't allow yourself to be seen listen to that word it restricts personal and professional life you're constricted you're restricted you don't get to elevate you don't get to expand you don't get to grow you don't get to prosper so when you're afraid of being seen you don't grow the key to happiness is progress you don't get access to happiness when you're afraid to be seen make sense my love <clears throat> stops me doing the things that i want to do yes yeah, so you're not living your authentic life just did, did this with erica yes of course uh, i know she's adopted this and using it in uh, the sisterhood I, I shared it with her some time ago so and how was your experience amy what is it like it's a ridiculously powerful tool all right. Oh, here we go. Haley is writing. I'm over self-sabotaging thoughts and being reactive. I'm over yo-yoing between happiness and sadness. I'm over being inconsistent and I'm ready to work on my mind and take action. Boof, mic drop. Good. Let's begin by being straight with ourselves, shall we? What are we over? Let's start there and let's get some truth serum flowing and then let's take the action. So question one, what have you created in all the spokes of the wheel of life? Question two, what are you OVA over? Question three, what has this taught you? What are the lessons? Awesome, very powerful. Jamie, yes, phenomenally powerful. What has this taught you? What are the lessons? And question number four, 
And you can't go to question four until you do all three. Diane, you would have noticed this in the three or four hours of doing it. it, it there is a, there's a meaning behind the madness. There's a strategy in the unpacking. There's a process in the order. When you've declared what you've created, when you've declared what you're over, what you've had enough on, when you've declared what this has taught you and you're willing to look at that separately from yourself and learn the lessons, and then, only then, you can answer question four, which is, what are you committed to creating next? You've wiped the slate clean, you've learnt the lessons, you've taken responsibility, hopefully you've got clarity around some actions and some integrity things that you're going to do to get back into your power and what are you committed to creating next and that's when you write down a bit of an action plan. What are you committed to? in your health for 2020. I'll share some of mine. I'm committed to remaining vegetarian. I got that really clear on the weekend. I'm committed to training at F45 at least four times a week. I'm committed to yoga three times a week. I'm committed to riding my bike three times a week. That's my exercise, oh, and dancing, of course. Wealth, I'm committed to expanding my business. I'm com like I'm debt free, right? So now I'm debt free, like committed to staying debt free, committed to, uh, ex you know, using uh, the barefoot investor, committed to following the book profit first for my business and putting profit before expenses. So, you know, specific things. What am I committed to family and friends, juicy, yummy occasions, going away, uh, quality time, sending cards and snail mail calling and texting people when I think of them. I do this, all of this stuff already, but I'm committed to continuing that. So what are you committed to in all the spokes of your wheel? And get it all out, but then I invite you to really start looking at if you focused on one area, what would be the area that would make the biggest difference? Don't dilute yourself and try to do everything at once because that's when we don't stick to our New Year's resolutions. That's when we don't stick to our action plans. Trust that if you pick an area that if you took action in first, there's going to be a ripple effect. There's going to be a cascade effect where you take an action there and it'll just have a domino effect and positively affect and impact everything else. Does that make sense? Absolutely. It made me go deeper. Thanks, Diane. So that's where you get clear about what are you committed to creating next? So I'd love to hear from a few of you. What are you committed to creating next? What do you want to create for yourself in your life? What do you want for your health? What do you see for your wealth? What do you see in your relationships with the people that you love? What do you see for your hobbies, passions and interests? Where are you going to travel to? What courses are you going to do? What things are you going to create that you've been putting off and putting off because you don't have time? What are you going to create in your relationship, in your marriage, with your kids? What are you going to create for your personal development? Where are you going to go? What adventures are you going to have? What books are you going to read? What information are you going to educate yourself with? What podcasts are you going to watch? What courses are you going to do? What coach are you going to have help you achieve the goals that you want? You know, what are you committed to creating? Patty's like coaching with you in 2020. Oh, thanks, Patty. I'm here. My one-on-one -on -one coaching is fully booked out, but we can do some sessions for sure. Uh, you know, what are you committed to doing for yourself to break through the paradigm of your limiting beliefs so you can go and freaking fly? What are you committed to achieving in your work, in your business, in your job? And what are you committed to achieving in your own fulfillment spiritually and your contribution to others? Because I really believe we grow when we give to others, but we can't ignore us. We've got to give to ourselves first. So that is the completion and congratulations completing it beforehand. And Jamie as well, you did it inside of the sisterhood. Uh, it is a phenomenal tool. It is super, super powerful. And I have seen miracles occur for people that have completed it. I've seen people complete it three hours later. The media is contacting them for interviews to catapult their business. Uh, people are getting headhunted for jobs interstate and being offered a lot of money. Opportunities come up, comp relationships complete, or a whole new opening occurs. Uh, it's super, super powerful. 
Uh, not just usual um, usual surface stuff though, my usual journaling. Uh, through this process, I felt more impactful. I saw how much I stand still in fear. Oh, now I see the attributes I can hold on while strengthening. Ah, oh, sister, so glad you joined this tribe and you are in this community who are just growing, being courageously. That's what this is all about. Consciously growing whilst being courageously human. Are you willing to do that? If you're willing to do that, then stick around because in 2020, I am unleashing myself to be of service through online courses, a year long mastermind group for those that, well, I can't take on any more one on one clients because I'm at max capacity, uh, but there's going to be uh, uh, other ways to be able to connect and be of service. My intention is to support as many people as possible to be happy fulfilled and realizing your potential now not when you lose the 20 kilos not when you get the man or the woman not when you get that promotion not because of external circumstances internal transformation so as a result your external world shape shifts that's what i'm committed to uh Gainey, uh, thank you so much for this. I don't know if I said it right again. It's so beautiful, the perfect way to start the year and make positive and lasting changes. You are so welcome. Thanks for tuning in. Me too. You're a gift. Oh, thank you for the privilege of being connected with you, Kelly. Can I ask how to complete my relationship with my husband when I cannot divorce till next year? I am holding on the countdown to divorce, if that makes sense, not the relationship. Okay. Yeah, great question. So if you're in this situation too, I invite you to, to listen uh, and I'll, I'll take some questions for a few minutes. How do you complete your relationship? So, so if, if I give you an example, Lincoln and I are six months separated. So in six months time, we file for a divorce. However, uh, if you're hanging out for the divorce, you're hanging out for that being the pinnacle of the completion of your relationship. Yet you can complete your relationship now through declaration. And that takes a conversation. So you've got to look at, are you and your husband in communication? And if so, great. It's an opportunity to use the completion exercise specifically for your marriage meaning you can say what did we create in our marriage so for Lincoln and I we created two beautiful human beings we created our daughters we created great experiences great we created great moments and great memories we created beautiful homes we created like a lot of joy like we created a lot what are we over we're over feeling stuck we're over not growing we're over relying on the other person to fulfill an empty part in ourselves like what are you over what have you had enough of and what has it taught you and what are you committed to creating next? Are you courageous enough to be committed to create a great relationship with that person, especially if you've got a co-parent? Not easy for yourself or the kids if you're going to stay stuck and angry on he didn't and she didn't and they weren't and he could have. That is not healthy. So you can absolutely use this completion exercise to complete your marriage now, not during the divorce. And here is my other coaching tip. Look at and take responsibility for your part in your marriage ending. Look at what did you do to contribute to the ending of that happy forever after. If you are just pointing the finger at the other, then there are three fingers pointing back at you called me, myself and I. So that is a really powerful way. Now, if you're not in communication with your partner or ex-husband or ex-wife, uh, then you can do the completion exercise yourself. What have you created in your marriage? What are you over? What has this taught you? And what are you committed to creating next? And get into communication if you can. Everything can be resolved inside of communication. Completion only happens though when we take responsibility for our part in the failure of the relationship. If we're just doing that, we're going to activate defense mechanism and it's just going to become argy bargy and we go in the pattern of arguing and then disconnection, more disconnection. You've got to take a look. What are you responsible for? Does that make sense, Kelly? Does that provide something? Uh, yeah, that would be my invitation there. You can complete before you get to your divorce. Your divorce is just the finality of it, really. Uh, you are nine, We are nine months separated. Thank you. It was mutual. Beautiful. Then have a respectful conversation. And, oh, this is a really big part. 
an acknowledgement exercise. So once you do that completion exercise, you look at the other person, you say, what would you like to be acknowledged for? And you let them uh, say, uh, well, I'd like to be acknowledged for, for being the best partner I could be for, you know, at least, you know, 16 or 15 of the 20 years or whatever. And I'd like to be acknowledged for, you know, the, the co-parenting and raising children or providing for the family and then acknowledge them. And then you swap and you have a turn as well. So do the exercise, stay present. And don't future forecast and, you know, you've got a few more months to go before the divorce happens. Hey, Jason Mills, great to have you here, my friend. We are looking at how to powerfully complete 2019 to get set for a brand new decade to create everything that we desire. So uh, I really, oh, you're really welcome, Kelly. Thanks for being vulnerable and asking that question. I'd love for you as we wrap up, unless there's any more questions, uh, I've got, 5% uh, battery on my laptop because I don't have it charged right now. So are there any other questions from you on Facebook? By the way, if you're on Facebook, type in live if you're watching this live and type in record if you're watching the record uh, later on. And uh, I want to hear from you. If you have any more questions around stuff that you over, you're over and you really need a hand to complete it to make way for 2020, uh, because I'm here now. If not, please just type in what did you get for yourself from this completion exercise? What can you see is possible as a result of you completing it for yourself? And what are you most looking forward to? I'm keen to hear from you. What are you looking forward to creating in 2020? Let me know if you got some value out of this session. I also, as people are potentially typing in, and if we don't get any responses, I'll sign off. Uh, I want to take this opportunity, especially my regulars, those that just jump on every Monday and Friday, to say thank you for your company. Thank you for choosing to spend your beautiful, uh, high quality time with me. Thank you for the privilege of giving me access to do what I love, which is give you access to be happy, fulfilled, and achieving your personal potential now. Paula Beavis, great to have you tune in, my love. We are looking at how to powerfully complete. Patty says, Tanja, you have unleashed the beast in me. Woo! Oh, girl, I love that. Uh, thanks. I'm glad you're live, Sam. Thank you for your refreshing insights. Your spirit is divine. Oh, thank you. I so want you in my life in 2020. Please um, slot me in when you can. Merry Christmas. Oh, my love. I'll get Jade, my assistant, to reach out to you today. We, our office is officially closed, but we're doing a couple of hours today. Uh, have a great Christmas, Sam. You too, my love. Uh, yeah, can't wait to do Dr. Joe Dispenza later this year. And I, I know you've done it, so I can't wait for that. Uh, thank you for a great year. Kate, you're so welcome. I'm so grateful that you've uh, you've been spending time with me. So I declare this uh, Mindset Mastery Monday complete. Please download that completion exercise. Do what Diane did. Spend a couple of hours with yourself. Really, Paula, please, this is going to be a big one for you. I think you've done this exercise with me in the past. Do the completion exercise. I too need you in my life. I'm here uh, in your life. Uh, however, if you want to deep dive and spend more one-on-one -on -one time or join our Minds, uh, Mastery group, mastermind group which we're going to be launching in january then tune in for that uh thank you for allow uh, showing up for us i hope you have a merry christmas and a beautiful break a restful break yes me too thank you so much i'm feeling unbelievable download the completion exercise complete the completion exercise if you have any questions please dm me if you are interested in working with me my one-on-one -on -one coaching sessions are booked there is a wait list uh so sometimes people complete you know their three six or 12 month program and we can put you on the wait list if you are interested in and finding out more information from our year-long mastermind group, then let me know that as well and we'll make sure we reach out to you when that's ready to launch. We're just designing what do, what would that look like? What would a meaningful year-long uh, private group look like and what can I provide? Merry Christmas, Tanja. You have been a powerful force of change in real estate industry this year. Thank you, Jace. I really appreciate that, my love. I uh, can't wait to spend more time with you and the team and obviously uh, Team Tim's and Tim's Real Estate for 2020. I love you. I appreciate you. My desire for you is that you unleash, like Patty, the beast within, the love beast, the juicy beast, the business beast, the success beast, 
the kind, compassionate, joyful, funny, happy beast, whatever that power is in you that's been suppressed and repressed, let him, let her out because life is fleeting. Kate, thank you for a great year. You're so welcome, beautiful. Sue, just started watching you. Looking forward to watching you next year soon. Welcome. Thank you for tuning in, my love. I wish you much, much love and joy and personal fulfillment 2020. Uh, Master, Mindset Mastery Monday and Rapid Five Fridays where we're live here doing coaching. Uh, beautiful. Thank you so much. Merry Christmas, beautiful one. You too. Big love to you and yours. Right back at you, Diane. I'm, oh my God, I'm so happy you did this for us today. Uh, Maudi, honor, blessings to you. I probably didn't say that right. Thank you. Will do, love. Thank you for all that you do. Thank you, Paula, uh, for me and for me. Looking forward to doing amazing things in 2020 with you. Right here, sister, always have been. Emily, thanks for all that you give us. Enjoy the rest of and Merry Christmas to you and your family. Thank you, everyone. With every cell in my being, with the marrow of my bones, with the stars in my soul, I love you. Thanks for tuning in. Stay tuned because we are building a phenomenal pool of resources to support you like Aladdin's carpet to just fulfill everything that is magical inside of you. Be kind. Don't get crazy in the Christmas season. Uh, tune into your body. Don't just drink alcohol because you can and it's there. Tune in. Is this going to be of service to you? Don't just eat all the copious amounts of food and second, third helpings because you can. Let your body tell you what it needs. Really enter the new year consciously. And here's my little tip. New Year's Eve is an amazing threshold. You can either enter it conscious or unconscious. Honour your truth is the most powerful thing that you can do as you enter the year. Do not follow the crowd just to fit in. Stand in your truth and consider you might actually become a lighthouse for others who are seeking to achieve higher realms for themselves. Trust yourself and trust your truth always. I love you. Uh, and people, yes, oh, my God, Emily, she's taking us out. Oh, my God. Beautiful. Uh, so I'm going to wrap up with the late great words of um, Maya Angelou. Emily, you are the bomb. People will forget what you said. People will forget what you did. They'll never, ever forget how you made them feel. Thanks for making me feel like I'm fulfilling on my purpose just for you showing up. I love you. Have a beautiful Christmas. Happy Hanukkah. Enter 2020 consciously. Be kind and loving to yourself. Do the completion exercise and know that I am right here for you. I love you. Mwah. Go well. Bye-bye. Thanks for tuning in on Facebook. Mwah.